Hi, we're back and we're still talking about adjusting entries. This video goes with class 10. If you're on the Monday, Wednesday, Friday schedule, it's the second video. So this is 10B. And if you're on Tuesday, Thursday, we've moved on to class number eight. This is the first video for class eight. So this is 8A. And when we finished up 10A, if you're Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we finished up 7B, if you're Tuesday, Thursday, we were talking about deferrals. So the last thing we talked about was deferrals, and those are adjusting entries made at the end of the month. Uh, when you're trying to account for something that's already been paid for, there was an original entry, and now you've used up some of that um, original entry. For example, you bought some office supplies, so you put down on an entry, paid cash, so you credited cash, you debited office supplies, and you got some office supplies. And the month went by and you used them up, so now you're going to reduce your office supplies, right? So you're doing that adjusting entry for that deferred expense. Well, now we're going to talk about the next category of adjusting entries, which is accruals. All right, so accruals um, are things that get incurred as you go along. Um, so they're not on the books anywhere yet, right? You know how when you had depreciation, well, you already had an office building somewhere before you could depreciate that office building. Um, if you had rent expense that you're, you had deferred, you had a prepaid rent somewhere on the books. But these accruals um, aren't really on the books at all yet. There's no original entry. So first we're going to talk about accrued expenses. Businesses often incur expenses prior to paying for them and accrued, A-C-C-R-U-E-D, an accrued expense hasn't been paid for yet. A great example is salaries expense. Employees work for a period of time before the business pays them for their time. This is an example of receiving a service prior to providing payment. So these are pretty easy to imagine, you know, um, all of us probably have electricity bills and it comes at the end of the month. We've been using the electricity all along. So we've accrued an electricity bill, um, salaries, interest on loans um, gets accrued. There's no uh, original entries for these expenses. So here's an example of how to accrue a salary expense. Assume that Smart Touch Learning normally pays its employees a monthly salary of $2,400. Smart Touch Learning typically pays half the salary on the 15th of the month and the remainder on the first day of the next month. So we look at a calendar for December 2016, we see that December 31st falls on a Saturday. On December 31st, Smart Touch Learning will need to recognize that it owes its employees for one half month of salary, or $1,200. So we got a calendar example here. And so you can see people worked all these first two weeks and then got paid. And they worked all the next two weeks, but they're not going to get paid. But December's over, right? So we need to recognize our appropriate expenses, right? Those, that's not a January expense, so we don't put it on the books the day we actually pay them, right? So we need to accrue those two months' worth and put it on the books. The adjusting entry to record salaries accrued during the month of December is a debit to salaries expense and a credit to salaries payable. We found this by taking the salary and dividing it by two. The accrual is necessary because the company has incurred the expense since the employee has performed the work. When the payment is made on January 1, the salaries payable account will be debited, effectively eliminating the liability, and cash will be credited. So what this means is we have to sit down on December 31st and close out everything for that month, right? So we owe people salaries. So that's a liability, right? Something we owe. We owe salaries. So we recognize the expense, we have to match it to the month. That's the whole reason we do this. We're matching that salary to the month we incurred it, right? Even though we're going to pay it in January, we're not 
going to wait till January to put it on the books because we incurred it this month. So we recognize the expense. So we debit expense. Expenses are always debits. And we credit salaries payable, right? It's a liability, so it increases with the credit. Accrued interest expense. Companies often borrow money for purchase of equipment or buildings. The interest on the loan could be paid monthly, quarterly, or annually. Regardless of when the interest expense is actually paid, a business must accrue the interest expense owed but not yet paid each month. The entry to record accrued interest is a debit to interest expense and a credit to interest payable. When the interest is paid, interest payable will be debited and cash will be credited. So again, it's pretty similar to the last entry. We go, well, what else do we owe? We owe our employee's salary. Oh, we have that loan. We've got to pay interest on it. How much do we owe? Oh, well, we owe 100 bucks, but we don't really pay it till we pay the note, right? So, but we need to put that interest on the books because that's an expense that accrued this month. So you debit interest expense, you credit interest payable because it's a liability. You owe the interest. So there it is, it's on the books. Now yes, someday when you pay it, whenever that is, you'll get rid of this interest payable by debiting it and you'll pay it with cash, right? Because that's what you pay things with. But that's in the future. This is the adjusting entry. Interest expense and interest payable. Accrued revenue. Accrued revenue occurs when the company earns revenue usually as a result of performing services or delivering products to a customer before receiving payment. If the revenue has been earned, it is recorded even if payment has not been received from the customer. Accrued revenue entries generally require a debit to the customer's account receivable and a credit to a revenue account. So accrued revenue works a lot like any other accrual, accrued expenses, because you sit there and think, well, you know, there's, is there anything on the books that's not, not in there yet? You go, oh, well, we did that job for that guy, but he didn't pay us cash. He said he'd pay us in a month, so we put it down as, we're, we're going to put it down as a receivable. So we need to get that on the books. That's what an accrued revenue is. We've done some work. We've provided a service. We sold a product. We put it on account, but it's not already on the books, right? I mean, most of the time we probably recognize stuff when it happens, but you can imagine there's some businesses where you sit down at the end of the month and you go, oh, well, we have this ongoing job. Uh, we're a contractor and it's taking us several months to build a house. So now we've built some of that house and we just need to sit down and figure out how much and, and uh, what that revenue accrual is. All right, so here's, here's an example. On December 15, Smart Touch Learning agreed to perform e-learning services for $1,600 per month. Over the next two weeks, uh, Smart Touch Learning performs half a month of services. The company has earned half a month of revenue, but it has not yet collected it. Under GAAP, the revenue is recorded since it has been earned, even though payment has not yet been received from the customer. The entry requires a debit to accounts receivable for $800 and a credit to accounts to service revenue for 800 So we've done some work for a person, they owe us some money, we need to recognize that revenue, right? So that's part, that's the revenue recognition rule. It goes in the period when you perform the service or sell the product, deliver the product. In this case, we have a service. So we go, oh, we sit down on it and we go, oh, hey, we did some work for those guys, we need to put that on the books. And so you go accounts receivable, right, an asset. We didn't get cash because they haven't paid us. But accounts receivable, asset increase, so that's your debit. Service revenue is a credit. Revenues on the right. Always put those revenues in as credit as you earn them. And there you go. You've got that on the books. Now you've earned that revenue and you've recognized it on your accounting system. Uh, so now you have your revenue on there. All right, so that's accrued revenue. So here's an example from page 135 of your book. 
all right? Um, and it's Exhibit 3-3, so if you want to look at your book and turn to page 135, Exhibit 3-3, here's a summary of both deferral and accrual adjusting entries, all right? So how I'd remember it is that deferrals, the top half of this screen, prepaid expenses, depreciation and unearned revenues, deferrals have had some kind of original entry when cash exchanged hands up front. Um, so that's a deferral. There's an original entry. So the examples they're showing is prepaid rent, right? You already prepaid some rent, so you put that asset on the books and you decrease the asset cash. Depreciation, right? You paid cash for that furniture, you bought it, you put it on the books as a f asset furniture, and uh, you paid out cash to so decrease your cash. Unearned revenue, so this is the revenue side of deferrals. You, somebody gave you cash up front, but you haven't done the work yet. That became a liability, right? Because you owe them that, that's that unearned revenue, the liability. Um, and you got cash, so you increased your cash. So, so in a deferral, something happened up front where some cash changed hands, then the adjusting entry happens when, if it's an expense, you used up that asset, or if it's an unearned revenue, you paid that off by doing the work. You reduced that liability. So there's an original entry and an adjusting entry. All right, just like we talked about um, uh, last video. This video, we've been talking about accruals. There is no original entry because no cash has changed hands at all yet. All right? What has happened is some time went by and we realized, oh, uh, we've accrued interest. Or, oh, we, we have to pay our employees' salary. We don't pay them till the first, but we need to match that salary expense to this month. Um, we did some work. They haven't paid us. We need to put that receivable on the books. So this is a nice chart to remind you about how deferrals and accruals actually work. Accrual entries do not have an original entry. They are adjustments for revenues earned but not yet collected and expenses incurred but not yet paid. All right, so in your book, again, you want to look at Exhibit 3-4, um, here's a summary of the adjusting entry. So this would be an example of how you do those entries. Adjustments to the unadjusted trial balance are accomplished using adjusting entries. Mechanically, adjusting entries are similar to other journal entries. First, the accounts are to be adjusted or identified. Then a determination is made as to whether debit or credit then the adjusting entry is created and posted to the general ledger. Exhibit 3-4 is a summary of the adjusting entries throughout the chapters. Entries A through D are examples of deferred expenses, E is a deferred revenue, F and G are accrued expenses, and entry H is an accrued revenue. So in the examples um, on Exhibit 3-4 in the book, um, they're just showing you that when you have an expense, you're going to, when you have a deferred expense, so A through D, right, you are going to put that expense on the books, right, so you're always going to debit your expense, whether it's rent expense, um, supplies expense, uh, whatever it is, and then you're going to credit the asset that you're reducing or that contra account, remember how we talked about depreciation, goes to accumulated depreciation. So for a deferred expense adjusting entry, you're either reducing the asset like supplies or prepaid rent or prepaid insurance for your credit entry, or you're crediting the contra account for the asset you're depreciating. For accruals, um, you just put those expenses on the book, so you credit the expense and then because it's payable, right? It's like interest payable, salary payable. You post the credit to that liability. So debit to expense, so always debit to expense, whether it's a deferral or accrual. But under an accrual, you are crediting that payable, whatever the liability is, wage payable, tax payable, interest payable. 
Uh, and of course on accrued revenue, um, your revenue is always going the right, so your debit, your original entry is no cash change hands, so it's got to be receivable. You're, if you're recognizing revenue and you're not getting cash, then it must be a receivable. So you put that asset account receivable as your debit and you put your revenue as your credit. And that is it for this video. Now, if you're in Monday, Wednesday, Friday class, um, your next video would just be class 11. So that you got a whole separate class. But if you're in Tuesday, Thursday class, um, you still have one more video for class 8. So you need to go ahead and um, check out video 8B before class. All right, good luck with adjusting entries. Go work on some of that homework.